It's time for some more med- medication now. More and more people are using cannabis, not as a recreational drug to get high, but as a medicine they want made available by a change in the law. How does that feel now? Yeah, fine. As far as the law is concerned, cannabis in its raw form has no medicinal value. But that position is increasingly being challenged. There are thousands of people in this country who are denied access to a drug that will help their condition, help their chronic pain, help their muscle spasm, help their nausea, help their anxiety, help their epilepsy. It's just unjust, unkind and unfair. Order. Ten minute rule motion. Paul Flynn. Only Parliament can change this. So the ball is very much in our court here today. But while politicians talk, one man wants to act by reopening a private members club for people using cannabis as medicine. And he wants his police and crime commissioner to help. I would like to work with him so I could open a medical centre here in North Wales to assist people who are seriously ill and people who are dying uh, without having to worry every morning, are the police coming today? Have they got a warrant? Are they going to kick our door in? But critics warn that this rush to rebrand cannabis as a solution to sickness rather than a cause of it turns a blind eye to evidence that's been around even longer than our drug laws. Paul Flynn states that cannabis is the oldest medicine in the world and that if there had been problems with it, they would have been discovered years ago. Well, they were. I'm Kayleigh Thomas, and in this week's Eye on Wales, we look at the growing campaign to rehabilitate cannabis from a drug on the wrong side of the law to a medication sitting on our pharmacy shelves. And we hear how a network of people have been secretly supplying herbal cannabis to sick people for years. Hello, thank you, I'm fine, lovely. How are you? All right, thank you. I'm coming to give you my scripts. Okay. One for... For normal. My medicinal cannabis. (laughs) Okay, there we are, David. Good morning, My name's Chris oh, Riley. I'm 47 years old. I was in the military for nine years. You've come down to talk to me today because I am one of the few patients in Wales with primary progressive MS that is in receipt of a medicinal cannabis from the government, which is called Sativex, and I'm also a medicinal cannabis so consumer. Was, the phone assumes it comes in. Thank you so much. That's OK. See Ta-da. you next week. Ta-da. Bye. Bye. Chris Riley was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, or MS, four years ago. More than 4,000 people in Wales have the disease, and the effects can be devastating. When your muscles tense, they normally release straight away. My muscles tense and then keep getting tenser, and then they never release. That, that's what causes muscle pain. The type of pain the disease causes has led members of the MS Society to back the idea of legalising cannabis for medicinal purposes. The health charity is the first in the UK to adopt this policy, which it estimates would help 10,000 people, as its spokesperson Genevieve Edwards explains. There are some treatments available on the NHS to manage pain and muscle spasms, but they don't work for everyone. And the evidence shows now that cannabis can help people where those other treatments have failed. So some people with MS are turning to cannabis, even though it's illegal, and others are too frightened to risk prosecution, and so they are ending up having to live with these relentless symptoms. Sativex is the first cannabis-based medicine to be licensed in the UK. It's a mouth spray made from two strains of cannabis plant. The firm behind it, GW Pharmaceuticals, grows an estimated 20 tonnes of cannabis every year and a very strict licensing from the Home Office. Because of its cost, around £350 a month, Sativex is not available on the NHS in England, but it is here in Wales. It took Chris Riley three years of asking his health board in Swansea, but now he has access to Sativex. Please come in. Thank you very much. So, we're, we're at home and we're in the kitchen, and it's time for me to consume some of my Sativex which is medicinal cannabis. That's the box. And what, what is it, Chris? It's in like a very small little sort of spray bottle, isn't it? Absolutely. Like a little perfume bottle, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's a little 10 mil bottle. Inside are two strains of cannabis plant, one of them which happens to be skunk number one. It's a full plant cannabis tincture, 
which basically means the two plants are soaked in alcohol, then the alcohol is mixed with um, a minty mouth spray. And how would you take this then? I, I spray it. I'll, I give it a shake because the alcohol needs to be mixed. It's painful, but it works. So here goes. Was for me um i let it oh you can smell the mint actually yeah mm. can you can you can you smell the cannabis oh yes yes yeah you can actually only up close though yeah and you only put it right under my nose i try and let it sink out under my tongue mm. because that's the most effective way for it to get into my system and what does it taste like minty cannabis mm. As Chris says, Sativex isn't the only cannabis he uses as medicine. He also consumes the illegal herb version supplied to him by people sympathetic to his suffering. And it's this tension between the drugs laws, which say raw cannabis is illegal and has no medicinal value, and the reality, thousands of people like Chris breaking the law and using cannabis to relieve their symptoms, which is driving the campaign for the drug to be legalised for medicinal purposes. We talk to a medic who's played a crucial role in changing opinions. I'm Mike Barnes and I'm Professor of Neurological Rehabilitation. If you look at the evidence of how useful cannabis is in a variety of conditions, the evidence is surprisingly good. And a year ago, I was asked to review the evidence for cannabis uh, for the all-party parliamentary group in the House of Commons. And we looked through 20,000 references. There's a lot of literature on this subject, despite the difficulty of doing proper research because of its illegality in many countries. And we found really very good evidence that it's helpful in a whole variety of conditions, from chronic pain and muscle spasm, but also other things, such as nausea and vomiting after chemotherapy, which is a big problem, anxiety, which is a huge problem. Uh, they're the four things that have very strong evidence base. And then there's other things that we need to do more research on, but there's good indication that they're helpful. And the one perhaps to mention particularly is childhood epilepsy. There's a few epilepsy syndromes that cause hundreds of fits a day in small children. And CBD, uh, one of the cannabis components, can actually cure that. It can stop those seizures completely. So it is, in many ways, it's remarkable um, and could help many tens of thousands of people in this country. So it's a great shame that it's uh, still an illegal compound. You say a, a shame. As you say, the evidence is, is overwhelming when it comes to particular yes. conditions in terms of how this might help. How do you see our current law? I think it's r remarkably backward. I mean, the, the evidence is undeniable. No one can say that cannabis doesn't help people from a medical perspective. Uh, and indeed, at the moment, the Home Office says it's a license, a, a Schedule 1 drug, which means by definition that it has no medicinal value, which is complete nonsense. They have, after all, already licensed a form of cannabis, Sativex, and CBD, a component, is also legal in this country. And it's now becoming legal in many European countries and in over half of the United States. So this country, uh, the UK, I'm afraid, is very behind the rest of the world in realising the potential of cannabis to help an awful lot of people. I could have explained to them why I was growing weed, that it was for financial gain, just medicine I need. I don't want to get ripped off by the... This month, a rally gathered outside the House of Commons as the MPs that Mike Barnes wrote that report for had another attempt to hear the arguments. The so-called Cannabis Tea Party was to support Newport West MP Paul Flynn as he put forward a bill calling for the drug to be legalised for medicinal use. Order. Ten-minute rule motion. Paul Flynn. Only Parliament can change this. So the ball is very much in our court here today. Who supports this? Well, the Multiple Sclerosis Society have given me a statement saying they want to see this bill passed. They say we believe that the law on cannabis should be changed as it's changing in Ireland, Canada and Germany so that someone with MS can access cannabis for medicinal use. It was used as a medicine until 1973 in this country. Paul Flynn's bill was nodded through unchallenged and MPs will discuss it in more detail in February. Back in Swansea, Chris Riley wanted to attend the rally at the Commons but was in too much pain that day. I've had my Sativex that's helped me sit down and relax. My muscles aren't spasming constantly like they were. But now 
I'm going to have to medicate with medicinal cannabis in in a herbal form because that's what treats the rest of my MS. So what I'm going to do now is get some cannabis that was gifted to me from a friend. So I'm just going to put it in my my grinder just to make it smaller so it enables me to use it in my vaporizer. This is difficult some days with dexterity. Yeah, it's quite physical activity, it, it, isn't it, really? I have to get help often. Um, and that's that's cannabis ground up. That would probably be, I don't know, tenors worth. But that's that's one dose of medicine for me and and I'll put cannabis in into this little basket and I'll draw the hot air over the, the cannabis flower. I know when I've taken my medication because my I can hear myself not shouting and it seems strange to explain that I shout when I'm in pain I'm trying to ignore my bo- my body I I You're trying to drown out the pain almost I, I think it's a concentration thing it's the brain damage I'm left with MS is brain damage and spinal cord damage uh, my body's eating my brain basically which sucks, but it's time for some more med- medication now. How does that feel now? Yeah, fine. It's... It, it, it's a part of my everyday routine. The routine that Chris has is one shared by many thousands of people who are using cannabis in addition to or even as an alternative to the drugs their doctor might prescribe. And you heard how he was given the cannabis for nothing by a friend. Wales hosts a clandestine network of people like that friend who grow cannabis to give to people who are ill. That network has been built up over the past few years by this man. A man from Vril has been found not guilty of intending to supply cannabis, even though he admits he planned to pass it on to people with medical problems. Shop owner Geoffrey Ditchfield was acquitted at Chester Crown Court earlier today. Jeff Ditchfield said he began growing cannabis for a friend with MS who said it brought her pain relief and soon found his green-fingered skills in more demand. I opened the Beggar's Belief in Vril, which the media described as a cannabis cafe, However, it was a lot more than that. Uh, We had a public area at the cafe, but we also had a medical centre where we assisted people who needed cannabis medicinally, and we did that in our private members club, which was next door to the cafe in Water Street in Rill. Smoking cannabis in joints mixed with tobacco is certainly something I would not recommend or suggest. So what we started doing in Rill was uh, taking cannabis and extracting the active components for example the cannabinoids like thc and cbd and then we started putting them into tinctures and oils uh, capsules suppositories i found a lot of research from over 100 years ago when cannabis was used for medicinal purposes all over the uk so research has been a huge part of uh, the last uh, 15 years for myself and today uh, my main area of research is using uh, cannabinoids to treat cancer and you wouldn't claim to be, a, you know, a medical professional, Jeff. This is just something that has kind of developed out of that first interaction with your friend. Very much so. The reason I keep doing this is because I keep getting contacted by people who are desperate for help. They cannot get uh, cannabinoids or treat cannabis treatment for cancers or indeed many, many illnesses. They can't get it from their GP. And until they can, I see it. I have to carry on breaking the law. And that's how we see it and view it at Buddies here in Wales. Is this like a moral crusade for you, Jeff? I don't know about crusade. It's, it's more a case of I feel I have no choice. I have people contacting me about, for example, their dying children. 
saying that uh, they believe cannabis is the last chance for their child, and will I help them? Now, the way I look at that is, if I say no because of my fear of the law, then these parents aren't going to give up. And there are a lot of people out there online who are scamming people, selling fake oil, uh, blackmailing people, and this can only exist because of the prohibition of cannabis. Jeff Ditchfield's legal defence at his first trial in 2004 was overturned by appeal court judges and at a later Crown Court appearance he was given a suspended eight-month jail term for drugs offences which included posting a cannabis plant to the then Prime Minister Tony Blair and to every member of his cabinet. Jeff now lives in Jamaica, where personal and medicinal cannabis use is legal. But the clandestine network of cannabis growers and suppliers he founded in the UK is busier than ever. Bud Buddies um, originated here in uh, North Wales. Now, 15 years later, we are operating uh, throughout the UK. Our network is primarily set up to supply people who need cannabis products and to train them and teach them to be self-sufficient. Because we can never keep up with demand. We have the philosophy at Blood Buddies of teaching people how to grow cannabis in their own home, how to make extracts to suit their particular illness. And throughout um, Wales, we have a network of mentors who over the years have been trained up. They will go into people's homes, help them set up what I suppose the police would describe as a cannabis factory, which is ridiculous because it might be five cannabis plants that someone's growing to make an extract to administer either to their sick child or to themselves. So we assist people to be independent. That independence or legal access to cannabis grown by sympathetic supporters is what Chris Riley and many like him are hoping for. If the government were to say, yeah, fine, we're going to legalise it for medicinal use, what would that mean for you? That would mean I don't have to live my life in fear anymore. And do you? Yes, I do. Of course I do. It's a, uh, for, Not for one second am I under the illusion that this is not an illegal drug. What I'm doing is an illegal activity. Although I, mean, I can go to the pharmacist and get my cannabis, I can't go to my friend and get my cannabis because that's illegal. I just want some peace and dignity. That's all I want, just to be left alone. And... For someone to deny me that is cruel. And how real is that fear of arrest or of the person or people who are providing you the medicinal cannabis themselves being arrested and then leaving you? It's a huge that fear. If that happens, this is what people don't understand. When that cannabis is seized... That's possibly my medication for the next month. Then what do I do? That concern about how the authorities react to cannabis use and its cultivation is also on Jeff Ditchfield's mind. He wants to open an updated version of Beggar's Belief, the cafe he ran in Rill, and has been canvassing opinion in some high places. I've heard very encouraging and I've seen very good um, comments from the Police and Crime Commission of North Wales Police, uh, Arthur Jones, and I would like to um, work with him so I could open a medical centre here in North Wales to assist people who are seriously ill and people who are dying uh, without having to worry every morning, are the police coming today? Have they got a warrant? Are they going to kick our door in? Will we have to now go to court? Because that's not really helping in any way, shape or form. Arvon Jones, the Police and Crime Commissioner for North Wales, is a former police inspector. He supports the deregulation of cannabis, both for medicinal and recreational use. I've seen lots of people arrested, charged, convicted of minor possession. It's a revolving door situation. It achieves very little. A lot of adult uh, drug use causes no harm to others except to themselves. Obviously, every drug use has its dangers, including cannabis. But, um, you know, um, adults are allowed to drink alcohol and I think that al- adults should be allowed to consume cannabis. And would you support the opening of a cannabis cafe, Mark, too, as Jeff Ditchfield opened in real? I'm relatively relaxed um, at the idea, but it would mean considerable um, consultation with the local authority, with the chief constable and with the health board. So his early days... So you're not ruling it out then, totally? Oh, definitely not ruling it out, no. 
North Wales Police told this programme that cannabis cafes would be illegal under the Misuse of Drugs Act and police action would follow. But the police force said it would look to help and not punish people using or supplying cannabis for medicinal purposes, which could include referral to a drugs intervention programme. Lucy Dorr of the campaign group Cannabis Skunk Sense says her family's life became a complete and utter misery after one of her sons became heavily involved in cannabis use. She believes Paul Flynn's bill uses the genuine suffering of people to push forward a wider agenda of the full legalisation of the drug. Cannabis in in its raw form isn't a medicine and what Paul Flynn's 10-minute rule motion was was basically a thin end of a wedge. If Paul Flynn and his supporters feel that they can't get the proper clinical research in this country because the schedules are too tight, perhaps what they should be requesting is that the mechanism for research should be eased. And you aren't convinced by the American model and what's happening there? We're having enormous amounts of research coming through from America with the problems that they are picking up from medicinal cannabis. Um, There's a department called the Rocky High. It's the Rocky Mountain High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area. They've been collecting all the figures and research since marijuana was legalised four years ago. Where um, cannabis was a factor in road fatalities, it has gone up two-thirds over the past four years. Young users are up by 12%. And ER visits have doubled with young children getting hold of of marijuana and overdosing on it. Paul Flynn states in his 10-minute rule that cannabis is the oldest medicine in the world and that if there had been problems with it, they would have been discovered years ago. Well, they were. The first paper was published in 1845 linking cannabis to psychosis which, you know, is a heck of a long time ago. There are 29 states now in America that have gone this way. The people are trying to justify the cases they made when when it took place, but nobody is thinking and no intention of reversing that decision because the advantages have been enormous. In some of the states, there have been a complete collapse in the black market. Uh, They made money out of it. They 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 can tax it like other drugs, but it hasn't increased harm. And the experience in the Netherlands and in uh, Portugal and other countries that have been courageous enough to close down their illegal markets is one that's uh, universal. It's the same experience in each case, that a legal market is much easier to control and to reduce the harm than a chaotic illegal market. MPs take a more detailed look at Paul Flynn's bill in February. Such bills are unlikely to succeed without government backing. So he was heartened when the leader of the House, Andrea Leadsom, made this unexpected intervention. Can I congratulate the Honourable Gentleman for his 10-minute rule bill, which I happen to be in the chamber to, to see. In raising this issue, he will, of course, have proper government scrutiny over it, and I do wish him well with achieving his ambition. But one of the groups supporting Paul Flynn believes policymakers in Wales already have the potential to divert cannabis users like Chris Riley away from the courts. I'm Stuart Harper. I'm the political liaison officer for the United Kingdom Cannabis Social Clubs. And we're the regulatory body for the 80 or so cannabis clubs that operate up and down the UK, England, Wales and Scotland. So Wales has got some interesting options when it comes to cannabis. You're not quite as far along the devolution path as Scotland, but you've got some services that, that have been devolved back. Health is one avenue and aspect of looking at it. If you look from a harm reduction point of view, there's money and funds that can be set aside for deferment rather than prosecution. So the police will then be given an alternative to prosecution if there are schemes available for people to be put into. It can just be cannabis, it could be any particular drug, but if there's schemes to go to, it's an option for the police. If those schemes aren't available, the police can't offer that as an option. It has to be standard prosecution. And when policymakers next consider the calls for allowing the use of cannabis medicinally, they may find it's not just the MS Society pressing for the change, as Genevieve Edwards explains. Although we're the first charity to have come out with this position, I think we won't be the only one for much longer. There are other organisations that are coming to a similar conclusion. 
Um, I won't name them because I think it's up to them when they're ready to change their position and I wouldn't want to bump them into that. I don't think it would be fair. I think society as a whole has moved on, really. The way we think about drugs has changed quite a lot. Certainly we spoke extensively to people about this and the feedback we got was that it's a sensible position to take. The Royal College of GPs is to update its advice to family doctors on the appropriate use of cannabis for specific medical conditions, but remains opposed to a change in the law. The new booklet for GPs was something proposed by Professor Mike Barnes, who takes a different view. How do you see the current situation then here in the UK? It's time the Home Office and the Department of Health listened to the evidence, looked at the evidence. There is overwhelming evidence that cannabis is useful. We need more evidence, of course we do. But at the moment, there are thousands of people in this country who are denied access to a drug that will help their condition, help their chronic pain, help their muscle spasm, help their nausea, help their anxiety, help their epilepsy. At the moment, it's it's just unjust, unkind and unfair, and it's time the situation changed. And the pressure for change is building. This week, investors gather in London for the UK's first conference on medical cannabis, amid predictions that we may be just a couple of years away from seeing a regulated industry for cannabis therapies. On the same day, medicinal cannabis is top of the agenda at a meeting of the Welsh Assembly's cross-party group on neurological conditions, where the MS Society will be pressing AMs to act. From his kitchen table in Swansea, Chris Riley says he'll also lobby policymakers in Wales and in Westminster to bring about the change he and others like him say they desperately need. MS hurts and it's stripped so much from me. And I now sit in a shell of a man, of a once proud man, um, having to having to beg governments to allow me to use cannabis when there's over 300 million people in Europe now that have legal access to medical cannabis. I don't ask people to like what I do, but I would ask people to respect it. I have no wish to harm anyone, but I will always advocate for the use of medicinal cannabis because it can help. Thanks for listening to the Ion Wales podcast. To find out more about the programme, visit our website, bbc.co.uk slash Radio Wales.